Tonight I'm going to be continuing Galaxy Season by imaging a target that I have never imaged before and that is the Leo triplet. If we haven't met before my name is Nick and this is my channel Astro Exploring. Uh, you can also find me on uh, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter using Astro Exploring and also check out my website astroexploring.com where you'll find lots of example images taken with the equipment that I'll be using tonight and also some tutorials for beginners just looking to start out in the hobby. Right, so let's head down into the garden and get set up and start imaging some distant galaxies. So while we've got some daylight left, I thought I'd just take this time to answer um, a question that I keep getting asked a lot on, um, on my Instagram and, and videos. Um, and that is about, can you attach a DSLR straight to the telescope without the need for a flattener reducer. Unfortunately you can't, they are absolutely essential in order to actually achieve focus. So here I've got um, my DSLR attached to a, a Canon Fit uh, M48 adapter so that it can attach to the flattener. And then the flattener is then connected straight into the telescope. The, the trouble is without any of this you wouldn't have enough um, inward travel on the focuser to be able to actually achieve focus. So as you can as you can see here I've only got about 10 mil of travel left on the focuser before it's all the way in and If I didn't have this the um, the camera wouldn't have enough backward spacing. It's about um, 55 mil of, of spacing between that you'll need in order to be able to achieve focus. So unfortunately without that you can't so it is absolutely essential. I'm going to answer another question that I often get as well and that is about um, pol my, my polar alignment. I, I think I confused a few people in a, in a previous video of mine when I talked about calibration for, um, for the setting circles. My HEQ5 is one of the um, older models um, before they changed the polar scope to um, what you would see now in the newer models where it has the um, the clock. So my polar scope um, looks like this when I look through it and therefore to get a, an accurate polar alignment um, what I do is uh, I did an initial setup so that when I rotate the mount to the position of Polaris um, uh, my circle will be in the correct position and I just find that gives me a much better polar alignment. Um, obviously if you've got the clock face you can just put zero at the top and um, align from there just as accurately but I just find that for, for my particular polar scope that makes it easier. So so now um, Polaris HA equals 0956 so what I'm going to do now is because I'm in the northern hemisphere for my particular mount I need to count the numbers from uh, left to right so I'm going to be using the bottom circles and I'm going to rotate my mount until the time level with this arrow here is uh, 0956 and that will put Polaris in the correct position in the polar scope for me to do my polar alignment. Okay so now that I've polar aligned I've returned my telescope to the uh, park position and I've rotated my telescope back so that the uh, on the declination it is at zero and I'm now going to press enter begin alignment yes and I'm just going to do a one star alignment because I find that that's that works absolutely fine for me and Arcturus is the um, the star that I was using when imaging the other night so um, I will hit enter if you guys can remember back to my last video where I said um, that I had a pro imaging tip and that is to take the dust cap off your telescope before you um, try and do an alignment on the, on the stars. Um, it also helps, as I've just done tonight, in, to uh, put the battery back in your camera, which I forgot to do. Uh, so I'm going to flick over now to the live view and you can see just at the bottom there that is us. We've slew to Arcturus and you know, <laughs> I tell you what, for a pretty rough polar alignment with um, with just my eyes and sausage fingers. I mean, that's pretty, um, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm now gonna center that in the screen, make sure that the focus hasn't slipped from last night, and then I'm gonna slew to my target. Okay, so we've got that centered on the screen. Here's 
guard put Pugo. He's doing a great job as always. Um, so I'm now going to put in our target um, for tonight, which is it's the Leo triplets. So it's obviously actually three targets, but M65 is fine to enter to slew to the target, and then we will get it centered into the frame. That's going to do its thing. Hugo just loves being on camera. Hey Hugo, he just seems to move wherever the camera's pointed at. So I've done a 30 second test shot at ISO 800. I don't know if you're able to see. Oh, you're not now that the screen's turned off. If you're able to see the three, there are three galaxies there. There's, sorry, I've got loads of smudges on the screen, but they're pretty much they're very very nearly in the center I am going to move it slightly just to center it up properly but I am really happy for a one star alignment um, <laughs> I'm really happy with that okay so a little bit of information about tonight's target the Leo triplet um, so it consists of three galaxies hence the name that's um, M65 M66 and NGC 3628 they sit about 35 million light years away from Earth which to me it's still fascinating that I can even <laughs> image an object that far away, absolutely incredible. Um, with the 72ED I'll have a really nice wide field of view um, but it'll crop down nicely as well to hopefully pull out some of the details in, in Photoshop later um, and I will be sharing that image with you at the end of this video so be sure to stick around for that. Um, NGC 3628 has actually very quickly become one of my favourite galaxies for two reasons and they're both to do with its name. Um, so it's named as the Hamburger Galaxy and I love a burger so um, that's one of the reasons it's become my favourite galaxy. Um, the second reason is that it's also known as Sarah's Galaxy and um, Sarah is my wife's name so she was um, <laughs> thrilled to, to bits when I told her that um, it's also known as Sarah's Galaxy so she thinks that this galaxy is named after her. For my images tonight I'm going to be shooting two minute exposures at ISO 800. I can't really go any longer on my exposure time for a couple of reasons. I'm not auto guiding and anything longer than two minutes and I, my images get a little bit too washed out and I'll start to lose some of the detail because I'm not I don't have a light pollution filter at the minute. Um, I'm really really lucky to live in um, Bortle class 4 skies so I can the fact that I can actually get away with two minute exposures without a light pollution filter um, is, is really pleasing. Um, but it's my birthday in a few weeks so I am hoping to get uh, a light pollution filter. So uh, either going to get the Optolong L Enhance um, or I'm going to get the IDAS D2. The reason being is that my the light pollution that I do have around here is all LED lights. Um, both of those filters will um, do a pretty good job at, at filtering out those wavelengths, especially the Optolong L Enhance because that is a, a, narrow, a dual narrowband filter. So it will ignore um, the light pollution from the LED street lights that we have here um, but they're both used for different targets so the IDAS D2 would have been great for tonight because um, that's really good on broadband targets like galaxies um, but the L Enhance is better for emission nebulae so I I need to make a decision I'm not sure which one let me know down in the comments below I can't make my mind up which one I should get first so it's the second time that I've imaged this target this week and I managed to get about three hours on this a couple of nights ago um, so I'm hoping to get another three hours in tonight. I'm really lucky with the position of the target at the minute. That's why I've that's why I've chosen it. So it's already past the meridian, so I don't need to worry about doing a meridian flip during the night. Um, but I basically have an unobstructed view until it sets on the horizon. So um, I can image it until about two o'clock in the morning um, when it will it will really be too low in the sky to it'll just be shooting through too much of the atmosphere for it, for the images to turn out very well and a big thank you to all of the people who have subscribed to my channel and if you've made it this far in the video and you aren't subscribed yet please do go ahead and hit that button now and also if you like this video give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments if you like this type of content if you don't like it um, what, what you would like to see um, differently do let me know so that i can keep improving and I hope you like the image that I'm about to share with you. Thanks for watching.